legacy lawsuit is a lawsuit that has been filed by a, a plaintiff, land, uh, plaintiff lawyer uh, representing a landowner okay, on alleged uh, environmental uh, uh, conditions left by an oil company that could have been drilled back in the 1930s and 1920s. Some of these suits go all the way back to 1901. These are lawsuits that are, that are on environmental issues that were legal at the time these wells were drilled. And I mean, today we don't have those issues because the technology has changed. And but, you know, back in the 20s or 1901 in Jennings, for instance, one lawsuit was filed and they received 33 million dollars because oil was put on the ground. Well, back in 1901, when the first oil wells were drilled there in the old Evangeline Field, uh, they used. Uh, ring levies just like rice fields to hold the oil because we didn't have tanks and so these are all about wells that were drilled in the in, in decades ago that were using the uh, drilling practices that were of the highest technology then okay but today don't meet those standards it's not something like if I had an oil spill today that I could go fix, clean up right away. It's something that happened 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. That's what legacy means. And what kind of a problem is it causing for uh, independent oil and gas producers? Well, w independent oil and gas producers buy these properties from the majors through the years and now we're the operator of record and so when when the uh, plaintiff's bar sues over the contamination they sue the current operator and they sue all the operators that have been in, in line of record from the 20s and 30s and 40s so you have to defend yourself against these in a court because you named it you're named as a defendant uh, the problem is is that the cost of defense and the cost of expert witnesses is extremely high the cost in time to companies uh, to to, to pursue this defense is extremely high in times of manpower and people and so forth. So it takes away from your business. It takes away cash from your business that you could put in operation. It takes away time and effort from your business uh, and potentially could put an independent operator out of business. If you're sued for $700 million uh, and, and, and I've got 10 of them out there, I could win nine and lose the one and I'm out of business. So, you know, it's, it's just a scary thought. It's a very chilling factor on doing business in Louisiana. Through the years when industry has had a press conference, uh, those, those, those times have been very few. And the only time we really bring up something and ask for a press conference is when we have an issue that's, uh, that we consider to be very important. This issue today, is, we call it legacy lawsuits, for, for lack of a better way of calling it, is one of the most important issues uh, that Louisiana's oil and gas industry is facing onshore. Uh, Naturally, we all still are fighting the issues that we have in the Gulf of Mexico, but onshore we also have other issues. The way Legacy started in, in, uh, back in 2002, there was a case called Cabello. Uh, just very briefly, it was about a piece of land that uh, was operated by an oil and gas company. The land was valued at about $108,000. A environmental settlement was awarded to the landowners of uh, approximately 83 million and of course the the uh, lawyers that represented that group received uh, approximately uh, eight to nine million dollars after that for the piece of property that uh, had a environmental cleanup of approximately 800,000 and receiving a uh, settlement of 83 million. It created a whole new cottage industry uh, in the oil and gas industry. Uh, cottage industry meaning that the trial bar then jumped all over this. It's like putting uh, blood in the water. The sharks started swimming around, and and uh, but it just a very few number of uh, trial lawyers got involved in this. Uh, but also. Uh, it also created a cottage industry, in all fairness, on the defense side. And as time has gone by, uh, after that period of 2002, we passed a law in 2006 to address the, uh, the Cabello uh, issue. 
And when doing so, uh, we passed a bill that was actually uh, highly contested, but it was a very, very good piece of legislation. Unfortunately, through the years, Act, which became Act 312, authored by Senator Adley, uh, unfortunately, the trial bar has managed to get around the true intentions of Act 312. Since, uh, since that time, there have been 243 of these lawsuits filed. There has been, um, of the 243 lawsuits, uh, there are 100, I mean, 1,500 defendants. Now, <clears throat> what happens is, in, in these type of environmental lawsuits involving the oil and gas industry, where an oil company at one time operated, say a major oil company did, and at that period of time they sold it to another company and then another and another, and many of these lawsuits will have as many as 30 different defendants. Now as we know, there's only a handful of major oil companies, about four, four to six, depending on how you want to classify them. However, with 1,500 defendants, the rest of those are all independents. Independents today in Louisiana drill 90 to 95 percent of all the wells and produce approximately in round numbers 90 percent of the uh, oil and gas produced in the state of Louisiana. And these, these lawsuits have created a tremendous burden on these companies. They want to participate, they want to be able to settle, but it has not happened. And if you can look at this chart right here, I'm just going to bring it over here it's a little bit closer, and you can see it that since Corbello in 2002, the blue line here is South Louisiana land drilling activity. The green line, or the, excuse me, the red line is the price of oil. Always through history, all the way back to when we started looking at these stats, all the way back to 1974, when oil prices were high, the oil and gas industry drilled more in South Louisiana, and when they were low, they drilled less. And then when Cabello hit, it flattened out, and it stayed flattened out. And it's because of these lawsuits. The many lawsuits that are filed are mostly filed in South Louisiana. Of the pro total production in the state of Louisiana, and the oil production, this other chart <laughs> over here shows 56% of the operators that that production is is under lawsuits by uh, on these legacy lawsuits. So what our legislation is going to do, and we want to be able to do, is to fix this issue. If we don't fix it now, we'll continue on as we have been in the past several years. It's something we should have done several years ago. You know, when 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 you. Since 2006, five years later, we're still having these lawsuits. Only one lawsuit has gone all the way through where the plan was submitted, and we thought that was going to be the, uh, the, the close of, of the beginning of a new era in the legacy issue, but even that lawsuit has been settled. So no lawsuits have followed through the system and worked well. The oil and gas producers, you know, we're in a risky business as it is in drilling, and, and these environmental lawsuits are causing our companies to not want to invest and drill in Louisiana. You know, there's 1,500 of these defendants in the 243 lawsuits. When you have that many defendants, it's a lot of different people that do not want to participate in Louisiana's oil and gas uh, uh, exploration because the potential liability of being sued by these oil companies, I mean by the, by the plaintiff lawyers. What is the amount of, uh, the, uh, of a lawsuit and how much does it actually cost to clean up a particular site? The, 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 there's, there's lots of numbers I could give you, but I mean, for instance, one that I'm very familiar with is $225 million cleanup that was, uh, uh, you know, that the plaintiffs were saying it needed to be done, and the, and the cleanup was only uh, 1.2 million. Uh, there's others that are higher and lower, and some of them a little bit more expensive to clean up. The most expensive cleanup plan I have seen was two million, and that was on a 140 million dollar uh, claim by the plaintiff lawyer. So, cleaning up is not the issue. 
getting able to clean up is the issue and we have not had one single lawsuit get to that point where the industry can clean up and clean and, and take care of their business. I can tell you about my personal experience and we had a lawsuit uh, uh, that we were filed on us and the prior operators of record and the uh, plaintiff's experts uh, alleged that it would cost $725 million to clean this up. Uh, uh, we went to the DNR got a plan approved through the DNR to clean it up and uh, I'm in the, I've cleaned it up and I'm in the process of monitoring it now and I have about a quarter of a million dollars in it. So 725 million alleged, 250 to 300,000 actual. Now that may be an extreme case, I don't know, but that in my personal case, that's, those are the numbers I'm talking about. The legislation that is proposed, what will it do to solve the problem? Well I think it's, a, uh, it's just to tighten up I feel is to tighten up what the intent of Act 312 uh, was in 2006. Act 312 was supposed to allow us to go to DNR to get a plan approved, bef you know, before we go to the courtroom and decide if there are uh, damages over and above what what the state would require. Well, of course, plaintiffs' bar is very, very active in this, and they filed many, many suits to oppose this. And uh, so this is just some, litig some, some legislation to, to firm that aspect of it up, to get us in front of DNR to get a plan approved so we can go out and clean it up without a whole lot of other litigation. This, this bill will absolutely clarify the true intention of Act 312 uh, that was passed in 2006. And, and that clarification will get the, we believe, will make it possible for us to uh, clean up some of these sites instead of being held up in court and spending millions upon millions of dollars uh, uh, fighting the, the lawsuits. Because every time we come up with a plan to clean it up uh, under the Act 312, it's appealed and it goes, the appeal goes back to the district and local courts in different areas. And that's where the home cooking takes place and that's where we don't get any success. By having the plan appealed today, if it's appealed under this bill, it will go to the 19th JDC, a court that is uh, familiar with oil and gas operations because they're here in Baton Rouge and have a good understanding of what needs to be done.